Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration where I've got something a bit different for you this time. This is a show and tell of a system that was sent over to me by someone on my Discord server and the idea behind it is that it's a system that allows you to launch rockets from one launch pad, as you can see here, off to various different places around your solar system and supply them all with all of the resources that they require. So in a nutshell, we've got, we've got a sort of testing design here, where over here on the side we've got um, eight different planets on, or eight different outposts so that we're going to pretend are all off on different planets, because for the, for the purposes of the demonstration they're all right next to each other to make things easier, but if you're setting this up properly, each one of these you'd have maybe this one would be on the cryonite planet, this one is a vitamelange planet, and so on and so on, so they're all off in different places. And then over here we've got the base station down on Norvis, which would be connected to your, your, your mall over here somehow by, on, by, via the RoboPort network, and can summon all of the bits and pieces you need. So let's let's have a quick demonstration of how it works. So we'll pick one of the um, one, one of the systems up here, one of our outposts. And if we have if you turn Alt mode on, you can see there's lots and lots of programming going on over here, which I shall talk about a bit more in in, in a few moments. But down at the bottom here, we've got a, a shopping list system that's quite similar to the one I've been using in my in the in the general uh, space exploration series. Uh, it's it's it, the, the numbers are the opposite way around. As you can see here, we've got positive numbers on on there instead of negative. But that's that's fine. It's just a slight a slight change in the way it's implemented. So if I go in here and order something, and, and we'll use Nacquita as an example because it's a uh, relatively small stacks and uh, that that makes makes it a bit um, a bit quicker and easier to see the system working so if I can come I can come over here and I'd say I would like to have 6,000 aquatite please put that on the on the list here and you can see uh, immediately we've got a, this number has jumped from 2 to 602 uh, to tell me that I've ordered 600 stacks of uh, of stuff and there's those two left in there before um, and it's gone green as well to tell us that we've actually got a, a request requesting if I now come over here to the main system on down on Norvis, we can see there's actually there's a timer running at the moment, and it's going to be a little while until that runs all the way down. So I'll speed it up by just hitting this button here. That sends that to zero, and in a moment you'll see this. Here we go. We've got the uh, the name of the planet that's requested, or the name of the outpost rather that's requested the uh, the delivery, and then over here you can see that the uh, the Nacrotite has started to arrive, and also actually um, there's there's some logistics bots and some rail because those are the are the other two stacks that were or the other two items that were uh, that were that were being requested. And so all of the stuff that's been requested is being brought over by a logistics bot from these infinite chests over here because, because again, it's a demonstration system. In, 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 in reality, you would have this hooked up to your mall um, where, where everything would be supplied. It's all being dropped into this uh, uh, requester chest over here and from there it's being passed by these two inserters over into this warehouse to allow it to then be, uh, uh, to, to allow the shipment to be prepared. Now, there's quite a lot of, it's going to take a little while for all this to be passed through, so we'll fast forward a little bit until eventually the system starts to approach capacity and we've got almost as much stuff in this warehouse as will fit into a rocket. So eventually we'll get to, we'll get to a sort of a stopping visit point and then any excess gets dumped over into this um, active provider chest and then taken away and put into the, into the, into the system over here to just, just to be disposed of again. Now, the, um, now, now, we've got ev now everything in here is the correct load that we want to send over to the other planet. It then gets unloaded onto these belts and loaded over into the, uh, into the rocket silo. So once again, we're going to have, we've got a little bit of a wait here while we uh, while we watch these these numbers soar upwards as the uh, as the rocket fills up. Once it's eventually all passed over, the um, then the obviously the, the inserters will stop like that. The every, everything goes into the rocket, and the rocket automatically launches and takes the uh, takes the supplies over to the um, to the where the, where they're needed. We'll then also automatically then build a new rocket for the next order that comes in. So as you can see, the rocket takes off. And a few seconds later, all of the supplies get dropped in over here. <clears throat> Great, it's working nicely. And then from here, they can be automatically unloaded from the um, from the from the landing pad into the warehouse here. And now they're available on the logistics network. Or you could have a system like I've got on um, on the on the space station in our current space exploration uh, Crastorio playthrough, where you build a mall off here and supply that to everything else you need. So that's great. The other, but however, the next thing I'm going to talk about over here is if what, what happens if you put in if, if multiple places request stuff at once. So let's come over here. We we'll say this one can request um, 2,000 of those core fragments. It can request uh, 2,000 imasite cores, and then maybe uh, let's let, let's let's go in with some um, crushed nacrotite this time. So we'll have 2,000 of those as well. And once again, that's now oh, that's only three 300 stacks actually. So we, we need we need a bit more than that. Uh, let's let's go in and say. We would also like uh, let's pick another core fragment, core chunk here, and we'll say 3,000 of that. 3,000 of that one. So there we go. We've got we've got 450. It's enough to trigger drip it over. To, it's gone green, so it'll, it'll happily request that. And then maybe down here we'll do something fairly simple as well. So we'll, we'll have this one. Can, this one can ask for some nacrotite as well because, as I said, it's very very convenient because it doesn't because the stacks are quite small, so it makes the numbers a little bit easier. And we'll go and we'll go and request some various different types of nacrotite here. 
Now if we glance over here again, we've got a, a short time left before the before the timer gets to zero, but I'm going to be lazy once again and just and just reset it. Here we go. Now this this time you can see that the two different um, planets have now both both appeared on multiple modules. So this time we're getting Norvis Four is getting all of that Nacotite I requested. Norvis Six is getting all the different types of uh, core fragments I've requested, and those are being again being brought back uh, brought back and forth by the by the bots here in the, in their sort of this this bot frenzy we're getting. And and these are loading up these these warehouses. So you can see over here we've got about eighty odd uh, stacks here. We're about seventy something. And it, once once the, one of these fills up, it'll then immediately dump its stuff into the rocket, which will take it off. And then when the other one fills up, it'll, it, it'll then pass the stuff over for that one. So in exactly the same way, you're able to get both of the orders to be taken out to, the, to, to their planets. So the system is is quite nice, and I imagine there's no, there's no reason why you couldn't have more and more and more warehouses down here. If you thought if you thought there was a chance that more than four of your outposts might request something at the same time, then you can extend it as necessary. And the reason it has this option is because imagine you're you've got a um, you're, you're you're loading up your rocket to bring you a load of stuff out to your outpost, which you're actively trying to build up at the moment. But it turns out one of the things you need is an enormous number of red belts. But Mike has stolen them all because that's what he always does. So that would mean your your request would be would get sort of part way through, and then it would grind to a halt because there wouldn't be enough red belts in your in your mall to, to supply everything but let's say somebody else on a different planet needs a load of um, and it just needs yellow belt or maybe they need maybe they need a lot of inserters or a lot of rail rail is probably a better example then they can send out their own request and if theirs fills up first because all of there's loads and loads of rail available because nobody's been stockpiling it in quite the same way then you can dump that straight up into the rocket much more quickly and easily without having the set without without the first without having to wait for the first order to finish before you can start working on the second one and that makes the whole system much more reliable not so much more not so much more reliable but but much more effective because you won't you won't have one order being um, blocked by another one so it's a nice system as you can see it works works very well you've got the uh, the uh, the the orders are passed across the rocket comes out brings the stuff out just just exactly what you what you how you'd like to see it <clears throat> So the next thing is to have a bit of a look at how it works and, and go in and have a look, have a bit more of a, a slightly closer look at all of these juicy assemblers we've got in here. So initially you've got um, you, you've got the the, com the contents of your warehouse and um, being being picked up because it's plugged into the, because this rover port is outputting the uh, the lo local logistics network content that goes into a, a combinator over here and and here where it's multiplied by minus one so that means that then when you you can take your shopping list here and subtract what you've already got over here so at the moment for example we're requesting a thousand belts but they're already there in the in the in the warehouse over here so those aren't those aren't part of the request in fact let's not look at that one because that's the one that's already got a th already got a request going so over here exactly the same we've got a thousand belts being requested they're in 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 the warehouse here so they're not being passed on to the rest of the system the next thing is we're uh, then running this through a stack combinator to find out how many stacks of, of of stuff we are actually requesting at the moment because it's very important to be able to tell the difference between a request for 500 rocket silos for example which are uh, which stack up to stack up to one and therefore that would be a complete rocket versus 500 iron plates which would be half which would be five stacks which is which is a, a tiny fraction which is one percent of a rocket so whilst you if you if you if you needed all that stuff then sure send the rocket over with the 500 rocket pa uh, rocket um silos in it because that's the only way you're going to get them out there but if you only need, if you need 500 iron plates then you probably want to wait until you've got a bit more stuff being requested so that is then checked against uh, which one is it? It's this this number here, the yellow square, which is currently set at 100. So that means if the if you get more than 100 stacks of stuff on the request, so for example, I could come along here and I could put in let's let's use the iron plates as an example. If I put in 500 there, then that's five stacks. So we get through here. We're, so we're passing through now. We're passing through a seven because we've got those those two items we saw before. In fact, if, if we have a look back in here, you can see we're now asking for one stacks worth of or one or a partial stack of the of railway one or a partial stack of um of, of uh, logistics bots and between f and five at least partial stacks of iron plates so uh, so you've got those being passed through but that means that we are then adding adding all of those together somewhere uh, here and we're giving outputting it all as a dot so we're saying we have seven dots as you can see over there on the, on the right hand side so we're passing the seven dots through we're comparing that to the number of yellow squares we've got and because the number of the number of stacks required to ship all this stuff over is less than 100 this number stays red and we don't we don't actually request the rocket for it the next step is the communication step and this is a little bit more complicated and this is where some of the intricacies of the system happen so as you'll have noticed each of these outposts have both a transmitter and a receiver as does the ground station and all of the transmitters Transmitters in the outpost are transmitting on one channel to the receiver over here, and this one this one transmitter on the ground station is transmitting out to all of the receivers in the outposts. 
And the way this the way the system works is that over here, every two minutes when this runs down to when this goes down to zero, you will see this counter going up from it counts from I believe one to fifty. So it does that every couple every couple of minutes. It'll count from one up to fifty, and that number is sent out by this transmitter, and therefore obviously received by all of these receivers out here. When the when the um, when a receiver receives its number, so when, say, for example, this one is uh, this one is site number five, outpost five, as you can see by the number down here. When that receives a five into the receiver, it will then um, that will be compared against the number up here on this black square, uh, black square signal, which is as you can see five. <clears throat> if they're the same, then it goes, aha, the uh, the ground station is talking to me. Do I want anything? And in this case, it doesn't, which is why you've got the red text down here. It's uh, it. It, it isn't it isn't expecting anything at the moment so it doesn't do anything however if there's a green text here because we've got a because we do have a request then it will send back a signals uh, containing a, a certain amount of information so it will send one back saying it should, should send the name of where it's uh, where, where it is uh, in in this sort of um, bit masked setup so the so as you can see each, each of the each of the numbers is a power of two this one's a thousand and twenty four presumably yes it is uh, so you can send you can send a number you can send this text across and that's what appears on the little display but more importantly it also sends over all the bits and pieces that are required and I believe it logs the number of the of, of which um, outpost it is that requires it so that all gets sent over to here it's passed down through the circuitry, which I'm not going to delve into into too much detail. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how you can get a bit more information on that if you want it a, bit, a little bit later on. <laughs> so that gets passed down here, and as you saw before, you then get the text appearing a lot across here to show you the name of the, um, the name of the place. In fact, let's set up another request just so, to, to, show, to show it working. Over here, so there we go. It's counting up through the different locations. It got to, get, it got to number one very, very quickly um, because it's the first one. So it's printed the text there, and now it's requesting all of the stuff that that uh, the Norvis One outpost wants. And, all, and again, once again, it's all being brought over. So then once again, we have, as as I, as I was saying earlier, we then have the the, uh, the circuit condition down here. So we have we have the request automatically put on here, and this this drops gradually as the amount it builds up in the in the warehouse as, as it's passed. It builds up in the request chest and is passed into the warehouse. So they're all they're all hooked hooked up together. And then once this reaches uh, 495 stacks, it will then it will then stop these inserters running, and it will dump any excess out to make sure there's exactly what we're expecting in this warehouse, and then pass it on to the rocket. And as I said, I'm not going to go into the uh, uh, intricate details of exactly how all of this works, um, but it but it, it it does, as you can see. <laughs> The final intricate detail of this, the, cl the, the last clever bit I want to mention, is that if you look closely, or not so closely, you'll notice that all of these empty rocket landing pads, uh, well, they're not actually quite empty. They all contain a deconstruction planner, just as a single as a single item up here. And that is because when a rocket tries wants to launch, it will only go to a completely empty rocket pad. So if you put a thing in all of them like this, then you know that the rocket will never launch, it will never go to any of them. But alternatively, if you want to make the rocket go to a specific landing pad, if you snatch the um, the deconstruction planner out of it uh, briefly, wait till the rocket launches, and then put it back in again, then the ro then you know exactly where the rocket's going to go, and it's always going to go to the specific landing pad you want it to. Uh, so this is again do, done through the signaling system. You get a signal being transmitted from over here saying, uh, "Planet number five, your, uh, your your order is ready." And so planet number five will go, "Aha! It'll take the um, it'll take the deconstruction planner out. The rocket will launch because there'll now be an available landing pad. And then the and then it'll send another signal back out saying, "Okay, the rocket has launched." And so then the uh, the deconstruction planner will be put back in again. And because there's room for is it is the room for slightly. Yes, and because there's room for slightly more than 500 stacks worth of stuff in the landing pad, and because we never load the rocket over um, 495, then there's always going to be room to put that back in, and then the rocket will still be able to land without making a mess and having a crisis. So that is a, is a nice, elegant way of making sure you only ever send the rocket to the right place. So you see down here, we have a completely empty landing pad, because we're lo currently loading this one up, and this is where it expects to go. The... Um, I was going to say that the uh, the deconstruction planner has been unloaded here, and, and oh, it was actually hidden underneath this inserter. Okay, I just couldn't see it, but it's now been passed back in again because the rocket has launched, uh, and so now the, all of the landing pads are locked. No, no rocket is going to be able to go to any of them. But because the rocket has started move, moving, it will carry on going, and it will still end up at this planet anyway. So the next thing I want to touch on is how you go about setting up a new outpost if you want, if, if you wanted to. If you went out to another planet and you thought, okay, I need I need to have some stuff available here. Well, the first thing to do is to put down the main system. Now, the best way to do it, do this would be to have a blueprint that has ever that has the whole thing with none of the numbers set. I don't have one of those to hand, so I'm just going to do it the lazy way. I'm going to put that down there like that. And if we zoom in on here, you'll remember me saying there are a few things that need to be changed, and that's why I've put it down without power because otherwise things would get very very confused. 
So over here we can look in this one and we say, okay, so this isn't going to be number two. This is going to be number 10 because we haven't got a number 10 yet. And then down here, there's something else that needs to be checked. Yes, down here, we need to change the uh, all the way across here. We, we're we're going we're to keep it with it being called Norvis. But we'll change the signal two on the end here, and we'll we'll um, we'll put instead we'll put in a signal A. So we'll go all hexadecimal on it, just so we, just so the, the uh, we don't have to try and move it, move all the digits across because I'm being kind of lazy here. So we put it put that in there again with 1024, so it appears. And now that's all that's all the reprogramming we need to do because we've got the ID set up here, we've got the name set down here. Technically, I should probably change this text plate but it's not part of the actual system we're now putting our infinite power source as well so the whole system starts running now one slight problem here is it doesn't seem to have automatically been put down with a deconstruction planner in it but i'm sure i can make one of those like this and just drop it in there and now this is completely ready to go it's already asking for more than 100 stacks of stuff though because we've copied over all of the um, the default things that every uh, good outpost will always want to have and because that's more than 100 stacks worth of stuff it has already automatically sent the signal over so let's see over here now we've got another 15 seconds to wait so at this time i'll show you the uh, the system working without me poking the, the hurry up button on it <laughs> um, as you can see the time ticks down uh, over there once it gets down to uh, zero you'll see you'll see the numbers ticking up here like this there we go and when that gets to 10 there we go there's Norvis A has been requested and this time this has got a much more complicated logistics request because it's it's all of the standard materials that, that are set up as a sort of as a default for an outpost so they're all being chucked over into here as quickly as possible by the bots and then unloaded into into the warehouse here and you could you could set your own defaults on this you could change the change the things around you could have it so you only want to order stuff specifically and manually it's entirely up to you how you'd set it up but as you can see the system just works straight away very very quickly there um, there's a lot of stuff been brought over by the bots it's going to take a little bit longer to pass it all through because the um, the rail stacks a lot and the belt stack a lot higher this is why I've been using knackle type before because it's just much much quicker but the system works it will now pass through all the things that are required and eventually this will fill up and it can dump it in all into the rocket it's also worth mentioning as an aside that if you happen to, if you want to change the the uh, the threshold on these for example let's here's here's one that hasn't ordered stuff so I could come in here I could change this 100 here I could set that to be actually I don't want to I don't want to launch unless there's uh, 480 stacks worth of stuff being requested because I'm being a little bit stingy with my rockets and now I could put in um, I don't know a request for uh, let's see 5000 that'd be 50 stacks um, 20,000 would be 100 stacks. So there we go. We've now got 200, sorry, 200 stacks. So we've now got 200 stacks being requested. But because I've nudged this number up, it hasn't gone green. It isn't triggering it for a request. But if I did want to actually force this, there is a button somewhere in here. Here it is, this one, where I can go, yes, the request. Poke that one. And there it goes. And then it goes green. And now it will actually send out that request. And we will get that flood of iron coming in that I've just, that I've just asked for. And in fact, if we come over here, we'll see, well, we'll see in another 30 seconds that that works. So this is the um, this is the fancy uh, rocket mall system. I hope you found that interesting. As I said, I'm not going to go into the full details on how every single combinator works in here, mostly because I haven't studied the design in enough um, detail to to have worked to have worked it all out myself. But mostly because I think the most interesting part of it is the um, is the sort of the top level, the the general idea of how the whole system works on an overall level, rather than the intricate detail intricate details of it. That said, if you do want to know a bit more about it, then um, the, the the guy on my Discord I was talking about, uh, Upside Down Foxo, is planning to produce his own video for this about this system. Uh, it's his design, so he knows it perfectly, and will uh, then obviously be able to show you far more details of how everything works. So I'll be linking once that video is out. I'll I'll link to it in the in the end card of this video and in the description. So check that one out if you're interested. Or if you have any questions about it, then feel free to show up on the Discord and um, and ask them yourself. And I'm, I'm sure I'll be very happy to answer them all and and give you lots of details into how the whole system works. Because I know he's been working on it for quite a while, and I think I think he's rightfully quite proud of it. Um, because there's a lot of there's a lot of clever stuff in here, and I'm sure it took a lot of uh, a lot of building and a lot of debugging and a lot of thought to get the whole system working. Alright, so I hope you found the video interesting and um, uh, and, and uh, maybe hopefully, ideally inspired to go off and make your own uh, massively overcomplicated uh, logistics system. <laughs> uh, I, we have some ideas for our uh, upcoming uh, K2 uh, SE playthrough uh, when, we, when we get onto space elevators and whatnot. So uh, we've gone very, very rocket light deliberately, so we wouldn't be using a system like this. We were also very, very um, logistics bot light. And... Well, you, you could feed this sort of thing from a mall as well in very much the same way. That would be uh, by belt. 
it will be a bit more complicated and, and give you a few extra uh, a few extra things to think about should we say so I, yes as I say I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, there'll be obviously much loads plenty more factual rare content to come on the channel um, make sure you so please make sure you're subscribed and keep an eye out on whatever whatever else is coming from here on and as ever if you have any questions give me a shout in the comments or come along onto the discord and uh, especially if they're uh, they're slightly more complicated ones I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you and I'll see you next time bye bye